Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to fix a built-in oven that will not light. The hot surface igniter glows red hot, but the gas oven won't turn on. First, turn off the electricity to the unit. Next, turn off the gas to the oven. This is an older Tappan oven. The igniter will be found in the lower oven next to the burners. Since the burners will not light, the hot surface igniter is a part which needs to be tested. This is a Klein 6-in-1 stubby screwdriver. I will use it to remove the two screws that secure the igniter close to the burner. On this particular job, a stubby Phillips screwdriver will be very valuable. Now remove the rack holders and the bottom of the oven. I will remove the igniter from the oven to make my test because I feel it is safer to make the test outside of the oven. Loosen the ceramic wire nuts and remove the igniter. Some oven igniters may have a plug on the ends as opposed to stripped wires. To test the igniter I will use my Klein CL2000 True RMS clamp meter. Turn the meter to amps. I will attach the leads of the igniter to a standard electrical cord with an AC plug. Now open the clamp of the clamp meter and put one wire of the igniter through the clamp area. It is important that you only put one of the two wires in the clamp area. Now I will plug in the cord. The igniter is rated between 3.2 and 3.5 amps. You must get a reading of at least 2.8 amps for the igniter to be serviceable. After about 90 seconds, our reading is 2.62 amps. Now, I'll use my Fluke 325 True RMS clamp meter to do the same test. Put only one of the leads of the igniter through the clamp area of the meter. The Fluke reads 2.64 amps. Now, I'll test the new replacement igniter with the Klein CL2000 meter. Put one of the leads within the clamp area of the meter, turn the meter to amps, and plug in the cord. In 90 seconds, the new igniter reached 3.21 amps. I'll do the same test with the Fluke. The igniter reached 3.24 amps. So both of our meters are telling us that the old igniter is bad and the new igniter is good. Let's go back to the oven and make another test. This is the safety valve. If it goes bad, the oven will not ignite. So it is good to test it out as well. Remove the terminals from the safety valve. Now I will test for continuity between the two terminals. I will turn my Klein CL2000 to continuity. Then I will put the black lead on one of the terminals and the red lead on the other. The buzzer indicates continuity. The meter reads 4.6 ohms. These safety valves should read between 2 and 5 ohms. So this safety valve is checked out to be good. Put the terminals back on the safety valve. Hook up the new igniter to the wires with the provided ceramic wire nuts. It is very important that you use ceramic wire nuts and do not use electrical tape to go around them. Now install the new igniter. Once again, the Klein Multi Stubby is extremely valuable due to the limited amount of space in which to do the work. Reassemble the oven. Turn the circuit breaker back on. Turn the gas to the oven back on. Now we will test out the oven. I'll turn it to 500 degrees. 41 seconds after turning the oven on, the burner ignited. I called one of the residents and told him his oven was running like new. And he said he was so happy that they're gonna bake cookies for me. In my video description, I'll put links 
for the Klein CL2000 True RMS Clamp Meter, the Fluke 325 True RMS Clamp Meter, the Fluke 323 True RMS Clamp Meter in case you need something more economical, the Klein 6-in-1 Multi Stubby, the AE Select Oven Igniter Repair Part for some GE, Amana, Hot Point, Maytag, Electrolux, Frigidaire, Whirlpool, Tappan, and Kenmore Ovens. And NSI Industries Ceramic Wire Nuts. Thank you. I hope this video was helpful.